Hey guys, this is Karen from the future, from the end of the stream. I am here to you in the beginning of the VOD, because now I have played both of the games that we're going to play tonight, and I can talk more explicitly about a content warning. Both games are very, very sad and deal with death and grief, which I will tell you before we play, that will be very clear. Um, also in the content warning of the second game, which is uh, Weird Grief, it will say there is explicit sexual content. There is very, very explicit sexual content, okay? I'm not kidding. <laughs> There's no visuals, okay? It's not images, but you hear me say lots of dirty, dirty words, okay? So if you're under 18, you can't watch this video. Go away. Get out. This is for adults only. If you are uncomfortable with hearing me say dirty anatomy words, then please leave. I'll see you next week. Okay, thank you, YouTube. And we're going to go back to the stream now. Hey, guys, welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, my Thursday stream where we do a little bit of whatever I want. And today we're going to be playing two new Bez games. Those are games that are made by friend of the show, Naomi Norbez. Welcome in Koneko. I see you got first today. Uh, so yes, it is back to a normal Thursday. And thank you so much for the lurk, Kendra. We love our lurkers here. I really appreciate that. All right, you guys. Um, so Jane, hey Jane, welcome in. So happy to have you here too today. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, all of my friends are here, you guys. <laughs> kitty, oh my gosh, Kitty's here too, for real, all of my friends are here. I like the silver kitty ears blue shirt combo. Thank you so much, these are these are holographic. I don't think it, sh it shows as well on camera. Let me see if I can make the light blurry. They're holographic, you can kind of see the rainbows. You can kind of see the rainbows. There we go, now you can really see them. There we go, if I lean back like that. <gasps> Ah, uh, thank you guys so, so much. Thank you guys. Um, before we get started today, I want to give you uh, guys just a small life update because so many of you guys were um, really supportive of me when my streaming schedule was super weird with what was going on with my um, grandpa back in October. If you remember, you remember. Um, but, uh, but as of this morning, the small update is that my grandmother passed too, which is very sad but she's been saying since he passed that she had wanted to you know she was bored she was lonely etc so um it's sad but she wanted it so i'm trying not to be too sad you know and that's it i don't really want to dwell on it i just thought since you guys had been so supportive and um there for me when i was going through it with everything that was happening with my grandpa that uh you would like to know so that's that. Uh, thank you so much, Koneko. Yeah, they're back together now. I mean, that's what she wanted. She wanted to be back with him, and and now she is, you know. Now she is. They're together. All right, you guys. So just a little bit more detail about uh, what we're going to be doing today that I want to show you guys. So let me go ahead and switch over to sharing my screen. So Naomi Norbez, or Bez, is a friend of the show. Um, he is somebody that was a longtime patron of mine back when I had a Patreon, and um, he made two games called The Dead Account and Weird Grief. They're companion games, interactive fiction games, just like the other ones that we have played. Um, and he made them for the interactive fiction contest that they have every year. So these are for the past ones. So Dead Account is what we're going to play first, and then we're going to play Weird Grief. And um, I just wanted to do this at the start, and I'm going to remind everybody when we get to this, because we're going to do Dead Account first, but then Weird Grief. There is a major, major content warning for Weird Grief. So this game contains detailed discussion of grief, adult content, including explicit sexual content. Please do not play this if you're under the age of 18. Thank you. So if there's any images that are explicit, I'll blur them out for YouTube before I post this. But typically, Bez's games are vast majority text, so I'm expecting it's going to be more um, explicit text <laughs> that I'm going to read to you guys. That's what I'm expecting to see. But content warning before we even get started in case anybody wants to hop out. And I'll remind you guys again when we get to the beginning of Weird Grief. But first, as you guys know, we like to do, let's do our quiz. So because we're talking about work today with Dead Account 
in my understanding of that game. We're going to find out what our job on the leftist commune is. So here we go. Get assigned a real necessary job on the leftist commune. So I'm expecting some jobs. We'll find out. Yes, Jane, you have to take it too and tell me what you get. Okay, what's your Duncan order? Oh, uh, I go to Starbucks. Oh, wait, that is an answer. Okay, so refresher, single shot of, shot of espresso, frozen chocolate, monster Starbucks. I mean, that's my answer. Chai latte, whatever the new thing they just came out with, or hash brown. <laughs> so when I, the couple times that I do go to Dunkin', if there's like not a Starbucks around and I do go to Dunkin', I will typically just get whatever the new thing they came out with. So that's true. But I, I really go to Starbucks. So that's my real answer. What is your element? Cheat sheet. Oh, by signs. Okay. Well, I know I'm a water sign. So I guess that's what I'm supposed to choose here. Water, fire, earth, or air. Water. So I'm cancer. Pick a waifu. Okay. We have Megara Hades game. Matt's Mickelson. Aubrey Plaza. Oh, that is my waifu, though. Uh, Jinx, Tom Holland, Rihanna, or Sidon. Um, I do love Sidon, but Aubrey Plaza is definitely my waifu. I love her. She's great. You okay, Riri? The dog is really restless today. I don't know what's going on. Go lay down and relax, girl. Okay, pick a major. Computer science, education, home economics, business, medicine, nursing, fashion, art, or law. I was a business major. I was a business major, so I guess we're going to be real since they actually have my major listed here, and we're going to we're going to put that. The obligatory pick a song question as Discord by the Living Tombstones. I just got you to back to 2010 Stevie and Art. Wow. <laughs> okay, are we about to get to that one? Are you a nerd? Yes, I would say yes. Song question. Oh, here's a song question. We've got Rico Nasty, Counting Up, Taylor Swift, Romeo plus Juliet, Dua Lipa, Moi. The Living Tombstones Discord, uh, MC. Oh no, my Chemical Romance. I might have to choose that. Hosier, Angel of Small Death, and the Codeine Scene. I don't know or like a single one of these songs, even a little bit. I respect them for having this answer on here because sometimes there's a bunch of songs that I'm like, I know like two of these. So, <laughs> um, Mitsuki, I bet on losing dogs. I mean, they've got a My Chemical Romance song, so we got to go for that. Pick an accessory. Cowboy hat, apron, knife, big earrings, those Lolita heart-shaped glasses, cat earphones, 100 rings. Well, I don't have cat earphones, but I do have the cat headband. I feel like this is in the spirit of the cat earphones, so that's what we're going with. If you had to get one, what would you get? Oh, face piercings. I got one before. Where is it? Lip. I had one once upon a time. There's a tiny, tiny little scar on my lip that you can't really see on camera so i can't really show you guys but i promise it's there from when i had a lip piercing way back when i learned so much about you when we do this uh yeah i mean i think uh, that's probably that's probably good i don't know where i really planned it like that but um yeah no that's true i more just always wanted a beginning activity so people had time to get in here before we started whatever the content was because i always feel like really weird because I, I miss like the first little bit of most streams you know a uh, biome to live in. I <laughs> I think it's so funny that these are Minecraft. Um, tundra, savanna, dark forest, swamp, forest, or nether. I don't know what the dark forest is because I don't play Minecraft. Oh, there's one more. Jungle. Um, but I live in the swamp, as you guys know. So there we go. We are definitely Shrek and Fiona over here in the swamp. Gender, male, female, gamer. <laughs> <laughs> gender is fake. Result is hilarious. Jane, tell me yours. Put your result in. We're going we're going with gender is fake. Alternate answer is female. That'd be okay. But I'm gonna tonight I'm feeling like gender is fake. X Those who take more than their ration of oat milk must be punished, friend. Person who chews up oats to make oat milk faux cat boy. You got the oat chewer, Koneko? Oh, Kitty, you got Executioner too. Oh my god. Crystal Healer. Oh, someone needs to be able to identify the shiny rocks and know what ailments they cure, friend. Friend is the cat boy, foe is the person who chews up the oats. Oh no. <gasps> Jane! Jane, it sounds like you're part of the other clique. I think me, Kitty, and Koneko are part of, like, because it's the leftist comments, you gotta have, like, the two cliques, you know, that are arguing all the time. So I think, like, me and Kitty and Koneko were a clique, and then 
Jane, you must be part of the other clique. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And so we've got Crystal Healer, Cat Boy. There's the Oat one. Keeper of Shrines. Oh, Male Wife. Okay. Girl Boss. You know, I'm really kind of surprised I didn't get that one. I wonder if I went back and picked female, if I would get Girl Boss instead of Executioner. Uh, but this is fun. Good quiz, right? Good quiz. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember you forever, Jane, but I guess we're done now. Right? I mean, I don't know what's Jane going to do on the on the leftist commune. I have no idea. <laughs> All right, guys, that was the quiz for today. I thought that was really fun. We're going to start with dead account. Okay, so we're going to play this one and then we're going to play weird grief. So this explains a little bit more about this game. So when I was talking about the contest, it's IF comp. That's like I should have put it in my notes anyway. IF comp 2021. So um, Bez made this in eight days, and this has got a little bit of a content warning too. This game contains detailed discussion of death and grief, swearing and adult themes and language. Please play with care. Um, but the one that Bez was really concerned about making sure that the content warning was shared was for a weird grief. So I imagine dead account must be the tamer one. So we're gonna, we're gonna ramp up. We're gonna ramp up as the night goes, you guys. All right, dead account, let's go. And I'm not, I don't know if the chat or if my camera is in a good spot. So if it doesn't, if it looks weird or whatever, I might adjust things. Okay. Hive kind. The internet's hive for your kind of people. Okay. Now celebrating 30 years. Wow. Okay. It's 2033. We're an employee, I guess. Username B Weathers. There's our password. Internet is throwing a fit, so I might tap out soon. Oh, well, no worries. Thank you for coming, Koneko. If you do have to tap out, don't worry. VOD will be up, of course, on Twitch immediately and on YouTube later tomorrow. All right, we're going to log in. Barry. Ah, hello there, Baxter. Welcome to another bright day at Hivekind. It's great to see one of my favorite moderators again. You probably know who I am already, but protocol dictates that I introduce myself every time you log in, so here goes. I'm Barry, the hive kind AI who's always ready to lend a helping hand. Okay, so Barry's the B and I'm Baxter. Cat was making weird noises back there, but he's okay. Now there's an important matter I need to discuss with you. Your supervisor should have already emailed you about the changes that are being put in place per the 12.3.14 update, which has just hit our servers recently. As you see, as personable as I am, we found that hive mind users want a more human touch when it comes to more sensitive matters like those discussed in the change log. That's why, per the 12.3.14 update, we've created the Close with Care team and have placed you in the front row seat of this brand new branch of our company. Welcome aboard. Well, this sounds promising. Okay, it looks like my camera is covering up some of the text, but since I'm reading it aloud, hopefully that's okay. But somebody speak up if it's bothering you and I'll, I'll adjust where my camera is. Maybe I can put it in the top or something. Maybe that would be better. As a member of the Close With Care team, you will be tasked with managing accounts that have been flagged as possibly belonging to a deceased person. You'll need to look through the account's messages to confirm whether this suspicion is true. If what you read leads you to believe that the person is indeed deceased, then you need to connect to users relevant to the person and confirm that they are indeed dead. Ooh, that does not sound like a fun job. Once that confirmation has been given to you, explain to the relevant user that you're closing the account of the deceased person, as per the 12.3.14 update. Once the account is closed, you can move on to the next one and do it all again. Okay. Keep in mind that once the matter has been closed, either through shutting down the account or reporting the account is actually belonging to a living user and it was thus flagged incorrectly, your supervisor will review your decision to check if there are any further steps that need to be made. Okay. Don't worry, I'll be here every step of the way to guide you through this new position. And since we know that this can be a heavy role, we're only going to focus on one account today and pay you for your entire shift. In the future, you'll be expected to close at least five accounts per day, but we're going to start off nice and slow, okay? Okay, good. Today we're going to look at the account of Mike Stan. Here is his About Me page. Once you've read it, we can continue, okay? Status, Badger 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 85. If 
you get that reference, hit me up because we're now friends. That's just the rules. Age, old beyond measure. Just kidding, I'm 33. <laughs> Mood. Um, about me. Hi, I'm a trans dude happily married to Jolly Roger, who's the nicest eagle I've ever met. I'm a furry and my Sona is a fun-loving badger. Love Apex Legends and enjoy maining Pathfinder. Let's be friends. Pronouns he, they, zay. Fun facts about Mike Stan. I hate bubblegum with a burning passion, but my husband loves it, which I tolerate for his sake. Other server nicknames. Pathfinder Mike, Badger Boy, Bad Rat is the best video game ever. Mike Stan, Stan Vinci? Play Apex, hit me up. Um, okay, I don't see anything weird in here. You hate bubblegum, Jane? Why? <laughs> I guess I don't have any strong feelings one way or the other about bubblegum. It's not my favorite, but I don't hate it. Okay, I'm done reading. Oh, thank you for the hydrate tap. How is it going? The smell? Oh, maybe that's what this user means, because they would smell it if their partner was chewing gum. Great, now that you have an idea of what we're dealing with, we can move on to the next step, confirming whether or not the user is deceased. Oh my gosh! Tico Erica, thank you so much! They've subscribed for 15 months. Congratulations. You, you subscribed for 15 months all at once? What's going on? Thank you so much. Tico Erica. I know you've been in here before, but I feel like it's been forever since I've seen you. Lady, what are you doing? Stop dropping things on the dog. Down. Lady just threw some of the stuffies onto the dog, who was finally starting to calm down. Now she's all riled up again. Well, thank you so much, Erica. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I love all of my subscribers here. Okay. I've already found and filtered the messages that have been flagged as indicating that he might be a dead user. Because you look through them for me and confirm whether or not you believe Mike Stan is dead based on what you read. Okay. Mike's flagged messages. Oh, and I click on each of these. I've seen enough and I'm ready to make my decision. 12 flag messages, okay. Messages by, oh my God, I have to click on each one, okay. Hey babe, it's been a few hours now and I haven't heard from you, you're not answering your phone either. I know that you mute your cell a lot, but I'm getting worried. Can you please call me as soon as you get this message? Oh good, I can, I can do this, okay. Oh, this one's, that's why. Okay, you're dead. I can't believe you're dead. I can't believe I just typed and sent those words. Why did this happen? Why? Lady, we were trying to play a game. Can you relax? Relax, kitty cat. And it still feels like you're going to respond to my messages too, which is why I logged on. I miss you, baby. Fuck, I can't believe you're gone. I could kill the drunk piece of shit who hit your car. I really could. Fuck. I mean, that's pretty conclusive, but I kind of want to, like, see everything, so I think we're gonna keep- I think we're gonna keep going. Hey babe, it's been a few hours now and I haven't heard from you. You're not answering your phone either. I know that you mute your cell a lot, but I'm getting worried. Can you please call me as soon as you get this message? Oh wait, that's the same. Oh, because I hit previous. Through. Okay. It's me again. Your mom came to the funeral even though I specifically did not invite her. She kept deadnaming you and calling you her dead daughter, and kept ranting and raving about how she was sad you wanted cremation, even though that was what your wishes were. Not gonna lie, I kind of lost it and went off on her in front of everybody, which was kind of embarrassing, but I hate it when she mistreats you like that. She left, thankfully, so at least I didn't have to deal with her for the whole funeral. It was still a hard day, though, but everyone's stories about you were at least really uplifting, and since you wanted to invite furries to the funeral, the ones we met on Bear Messenger all those years ago, Aha, how time flies, huh? I reached out to all of our internet friends, and a bunch of them came in with their suit slash partial. It was like a party in your honor. Having them there to lift the mood really helped things. After the service, we all had lunch together at the Parakeet Pub, our favorite place. It was a nice time, and all the children loved seeing all the furries in costume. Haha, ha. I think we pissed off more than a few parents. <laughs> at least the kids were happy. That's kind of cute. Yeah, this is really sad. I see why the game is would let me just stop and make a decision, you know. 
Um, also, something really surprising happened. After we finished having our fill, the server told us that Steve, the owner, I know you've met him a few times, but just in case you forgot, would pay our bill himself. I was totally floored. That was such a good gesture of kindness that I really needed, honestly. Oh, wow. Good guy, Steve. So yeah, that was a funeral and now I'm home. A few of our friends are staying the night. They offered to stick around here for a few weeks to help me through. It was really nice of them. Juniper's also here, by the way. I know she was always your little favorite. She told me that she just finalized a book deal with Harper Collins, and I'm so excited to see it come out. I'll be first at line at the Labyrinth Library to get a copy. All right, it's coming up to my bedtime. I'll message you some more later. Love you, and I miss you. Good night, my beautiful man. Okay, next. Juniper and the others left today. They made a ton of meals and stuck them in the freezer, so I don't have to worry about that for a while. So that was really nice of them. But now that I'm alone again, I just feel the weight of everything threatening to crush me to pieces. I've been talking to my therapist about this, but I've been having wave after wave of suicidal thoughts since you died. Life just doesn't feel the same without you, babe. I know that if you were here, you'd encourage me to push through and give me a great big hug. Make sure I'm taking my meds. I am, by the way. Tell me, fly like the eagle. So I couldn't help it. I had to. <laughs> you are. Um, but it's just so hard right now. There's so many things I'm sad you'll never have. I wish you had lived long enough to get top surgery and testosterone and your hysterectomy. Fuck. It's just not fair that this happened to you. That all of the cars that drunk driver hit, it was yours. And now I have to testify in court against that motherfucker when the trial comes, which is just ugh. Don't get me wrong. I want to punish that piece of shit and I'm going to follow through on that, but I don't know how I'm going to make it through without breaking down. Possibly the worst part of this is that since your death was on the news, I've been getting plenty of calls from injury attorneys who are so sorry about your death and want to represent me, despite the fact that Tammy has already agreed to help me find a legal representative. It's the worst. Alright, I wanted to get to bed a bit early, so I'll talk to you later, okay? Love you. Miss you. Hi, it's been a while since we talked, huh? Or rather, it's been a while since I messaged you. You can't respond after all. But anyway... I wanted to let you know that we won the case. Oh, hey, that's good. The piece of shit is spending jail time and paying both my attorney's fees and damages. I'm just so relieved. This whole ordeal has been stressful beyond belief. And the worst part of it is, at the end of the day, you're still gone. I've invited some friends over to get dinner, get drunk, and play Cards Against Humanity to celebrate the legal victory. Hopefully I can relax and have some fun. I need a distraction after such a horrible ordeal. Talk to you later, babe. Love you. Getting ready to go to Jersey Furs. It's going to be weird walking through the convention without you. At least I'm meeting up with a ton of friends while I'm there. That's nice. I still don't know what to do with your fursuit head, by the way. Having it around is comforting, yet also bittersweet. I'll let you know how Jersey Fur goes. Love ya, my beautiful man. This is so sad. How can, I mean, I'm sure this is part of the commentary, but like, how can this be a job to read all these messages and delete accounts? I don't know. Like, why? Why Why? Why delete the accounts just because the person passed? I don't know. So Jersey Furs was good, mostly. I ran into more than a few people asking where my badger husband was this time. I told them you had died, and a lot of people hugged me and told me how sorry they are to hear that. It was nice, I guess. I had our regular artist draw your fursona as an angel in heaven. I think it's pretty appropriate, unless the Christian God exists, because in that case, I know bigots believe that he sends queer people to hell. But let's not think about it, though, okay? <laughs> I think you're in heaven, damn it. That's my headcanon, and Jesus can suck it. You tell him, Jolly Roger. Uh, you deserve that much, babe. You deserve that much. We've got a little sketch here of Badger Angel. I also ran into quite a few friends from the funeral while I was there. We had already planned to meet up, so it was nice to see them again. We had an intimate time in my hotel room last night. I really needed one, so it was nice to truly escape for what felt like the first time in months. But as I was lying in bed, basking in the afterglow, everything just hit me again. The grief coming in like a terrible wave, and I just felt like shit. Juniper and Tyler were able to talk me out of it, but it was still pretty hard. I miss you, babe, so fucking much. All right, it's bedtime. You know, I strict, <laughs> I like to keep my schedule. I identify with this Jolly Roger person. Good night. Love you, Mickey. Almost six months without you by my side. I don't know what I'm going to do for our anniversary on the 6th. We'll see what happens, babe. I miss you. Okay, and that was all of them. So back to flag messages. We've got, that was the most of them. So let's do 
She Hulk Tammy. Ugh, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, hey, bro, Roger's been trying to, get, trying to get in touch with you. He's getting really worried, so if you can call him as soon as you see this, that would be great. Love ya. How are you going to be able to take this account away from them? Right? Like, they can't send messages anymore if the account's deleted. I don't. I just don't like this. You know, I don't like this idea. Like, why? Like, what does it hurt to have the dead account still there? We're all holding up hope for you, bro. Please pull through. Please wake up. Because, I mean, like, people abandon accounts online all the time, you know, and usually most places, if they delete them at all, it's after a whole year. And it's not even been a year yet. We're just talking, you know, 2033. It's only been a few months. It's like May, right? I could murder the mo motherfucker who hit your car. I swear I could. I know Roger's not a violent man, but I'm sure he feels the exact same way. The motherfucker is in police custody now, awaiting trial. If he were in front of me, I would strangle him. No question. Good thing he's not here, or I'd be in jail. I just can't believe you're gone. Part of me is hoping that as I send these messages, you'll flicker back online and reply. But the rational part of me knows that's not going to happen. Later, bro. Love ya. Shad. Is that like sad mad? <clears throat> sad had? <clears throat> so mom tried to crash your funeral. Uh, dead named you misgendered you all that garbage. Roger told her off though. Good. fucker. I don't know why I'm sending this. I know you're never going to read this rationally speaking. Whatever. Gives me a bit of closure, I suppose. Going to dinner at the Parakeet Pub. See you later, bro. Rest easy. Hey, Mike. Roger's having a really hard time right now. I and some of your furry friends are trying to help him through it, but it's still difficult for the poor guy. I wish you could give me a sign that you're still around somehow. I've never believed in the idea of a soul before, but I want it to be true now more than ever. I love you so much, bro. Loved you, I guess. That's hard to say, though. Referring to you in the past tense feels weird. All right, I'm going to help Juniper make some food for Roger. She remembered how much he loves pumpkin pancakes and found a place online that sells batter for it in bulk. So that was super awesome of her to do. Love you, bro. We miss you dearly. We won, bitches. That drunk piece of shit is getting locked up and paying Roger the money he deserves. Honestly, fuck him. He deserves every day of that fucking sentence. It doesn't bring you back, but hopefully it can at least help Roger recover financially since we lost you. I know that he's been having a hard time with the finances since you were the breadwinner. But I just wanted to message you in celebration. I know you're not going to reasonably respond, but yeah. All right, going to party at Roger's house to celebrate. Love you, bro, so fucking much, right? Like, fuck this dude's mom. <clears throat> I know people grieve in, in weird ways, but like, why try to take that grief away from other people too? Just because you have weird, awkward feelings. Just found out from Roger that he's still planning on going to Jersey first this year. I kind of thought he wouldn't go because of all the shit that went down with you being gone, but he's going. Suppose he needs an escape, so I understand. Things are still pretty hard for him right now. I also checked in with Juniper to see how she's going. She's also planning on going to Jersey first. Apparently, Roger is meeting up with a bunch of friends there, herself included. Hopefully, Roger can relax for a little while. Lord knows he needs some time to himself. All right, bro, I'm going to sign off for tonight. Honestly, not sure if I'm going to message you again. My therapist says it's an unhealthy coping mechanism and that I should stop. But I can't help it. But he told me that I might be pretending that you're still here and thus preventing myself from moving through the cycle of grief. Which are very valid point and I, that I hadn't considered, to be honest. So I think this will be my last time messaging you. Not because I don't love you, but because I want to heal. I'm sorry. I hope you understand. I love you, bro. Miss you very much every day. All right, bye. And that is the end, so she didn't continue to message him. Okay. And here's Juniper, the other friend. Kitty cats, we were trying to play a sad game. Yeah, don't meow at me. You know what you're doing. I don't know if the microphone picked up that meow, but she literally meowed that. Yeah, um, Bez wrote all of this. He wrote this game and the next one. And it looks like someone did the art for him based on the opening credits, but he wrote all this. Hey, Mike, just followed up about our call. I haven't heard from you yet, which is kind of weird since you usually message me when you're running late. Hope you're okay. Looking forward to talking to you later. Hi, Mike. I'm messaging you here because my therapist said it might be a good idea. I was talking about how much I miss you, so she suggested this, and here we are. I miss our hive kind calls. I miss getting coffee with you and Roger in New York. I miss feeling like I was growing and you were there on the sidelines to cheer me on. 
Now I don't have many people in my life cheering for me, honestly. My parents never wanted me to move out to New York City or become a writer, but you always know that whole s oh, but you already know that whole story. At least I still have the Apex group. We've all been trying to deal with the fact that you're gone, but it's really hard for everyone right now. I just miss you, I guess. Still trying to process the fact that you're gone from this world. I miss your hugs. I miss the way your voice would practically crack as you cheered for my achievements. I got my book deal a week after you died. I wish I could have told you about that. I miss the small flame of love between us that got kindled into something more. I miss exploring myself with you and Roger, that precious intimate space that we created that nobody could take away from us. I miss hearing your voice call me good girl and your strong arm wrapping around me. I miss waking up in your bed with you on my right and Roger on my left and feeling just so safe. Love you, okay? I miss you a lot. I know that I've said that like three times now, but it's true. Maybe someday we'll meet again, and we can laugh about all the things we used to again. That would be nice. All right, I'm going to stop now. I feel a bit better now, I think. I'll catch you. Well, I won't, but you get what I mean. Bye, Mike. Juniper sounds nice. Five flag message from Stanley, I guess. Yeah, this feels super real. Like, I mean, I think that nowadays when someone passes that has, like, a account, People send these kind of messages or like text them this stuff. Hey, so I just heard the news from Roger. I just, I can't believe this. I don't know why I'm messaging a dead person, but there we go. I'll miss you, bro. So much love. Oh, that's sad. Oh, I definitely do this to the few people. Yeah, like, you know, just every once in a while. You know, it's kind of like, um, uh, then you can kind of see it instead of just like imagining the prayer. You can kind of see it, you know, it feels better. Hey, so, like, I know we're all afraid to admit it, but it just doesn't feel the same without Mike here. We can still finish the match or whatever. I just wanted to clear the air a bit. Sorry if I'm overstepping. I don't mean to. Oh, this this is a group chat. Okay. No, it's okay. You're right. I've been trying to pretend that everything is fine, but it's really not. I just can't believe my husband's gone. And it's so small and so stupid, but I miss kissing, kicking ass in Apex with him. I miss him's Pathfinder. That's not small and stupid at all, dude. It's okay to miss the small stuff. Life's made out of the small stuff after all. So don't worry about it. Yeah, we're here for you, dude. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. No, 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 lady. You're going to turn off the computer again. Yeah, come here. <sighs> Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Anytime. Yeah. What they said. All right. So we read them all i've seen enough i'm ready to make my decision they are they're really sassy today well they've been giving me a lot of attention because of course i was pretty sad this morning so i think they're trying to take care of me but they're really just kind of getting in the way lady i love you you're so cute and yes a slow blink i love you but don't climb on the computer please okay oh hey how's it going bell all right this game is very sad, by the way. I don't know if you want to if you want to stay for this. Uh, we're doing many sad things. Okay, excellent. What's your conclusion here, Baxter? Uh, oh, I can't. This is the only thing I can choose. No different bell, Jane. B B E two L's, not B E L. Two L's, not one L. Different person. No, there's another, there's another bell bell that's just B-E-L. <laughs> All right, this account, okay, I don't get to, so I don't get to, like, lie and say that they're still around so that they can keep the account. I mean, I think everybody else was pretty much okay, but I think Roger still needs it. I don't know. Even though his therapist says he's supposed to get over it and not be texting anymore and grieve better. All right, good to know you feel the same way that I did. I, I really just wanted to lie, but I don't, I guess I can't. Now that we know that the account belongs to a deceased user, let's move on to the next step, confirming the death. Let's make a group chat with all the... That is ghoulish. Ah, uh, okay. Let's make a group chat with all the people who messaged Mike and ask them to help us. This is standard procedure. 
Also, I've checked their data, and luckily for us, all of the users have a, his have a history of being online at the time and are currently available. Click the button to create a group chat, and then we can get to business. Dislike. A group chat has been created. And B Weathers. What the fuck? Oh, that went too fast. I didn't read it. What did you do this time? I didn't do anything. Why do you always have to assume the worst? Can you guys stop talking so the mod can say what they want from us? Yeah, I want to hear too. Okay, okay, fine. Mod, you can go ahead. Uh, oh, and I get to choose. Why should- why am I asking them? This is- <sighs> Someday, when Facebook runs out of server space, that's like what I'm imagining right now. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to give them a brief greeting. Like, let's be as polite as we can be. Since I have to do my job. Hello, I'm Baxter Weathers, a member of Hivekind Content Moderation Department on the new Close With Care division. I'm non-binary, pronouns are they, them. Could you all introduce yourselves and share your name and pronouns with me? Uh, sure. Stanley Gender Fluid, non-binary, blah, blah, blah. I'm Tabitha, but everyone calls me Tammy. We already know all this because we know these people. Juniper, my pronouns, because the text goes kind of fast, so I'm trying to, like, just go quick. Okay, Roger. Um, excellent. Thank you all very much. Okay. Now we all know each other. Coolio. I like you, Stanley. You're snarky. I guess you want something from us or someone violated the rules. <laughs> Stop pissing me off, Stanley. Let's get to the point. What do you need? Mmm, slowly. You might have seen the new Hivekind update yesterday. In the update, Hivekind has decided to remove accounts that belong to deceased users, but before we can do that, the death has to be confirmed. Based on the message history the Hivekind AI Barry collected, it does appear that Mike is in fact dead. I reviewed it for myself, and I can't, it's going too fast. Wow, um, that was nowhere near what I was expecting, and to be honest, that's a lot. Also, I totally missed that. Yeah, I missed it too. What the fuck? I saw it. I didn't think they would be taking action this soon, though, and against Mike's account of all people. Do you have to close the account? Is that the only option? Mike was my hub's husband, being able to message him. It's hard to explain, but please, could you consider not closing the account? Uh, yeah, I'll see what I can do. They didn't really explain the policy that well to me either. I'll see what I can do, but I can't promise anything. For the new update, the new procedure dictates that I must close the account. However, I'll look and see if there's anything else I can do. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Now let me get to the heart of the matter. Can you confirm from you all that Mike is in fact dead? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, he is. Unfortunately, true. Us telling you that is enough, right? Or do you need the death certificate or something? No. No, I don't need you to get that for me. The verbal confirmation is fine if it comes from multiple users per the new policy. Okay, good. Because I don't really have the mental capacity to dig that up right now. Ha ha. Tell them the next step. So now that I have confirmed that Mike is in fact dead, I'm now required to close his account. Oh shit, right. So we won't be able to message the account anymore. You can still message him, but you'll still be able to message the account, but you'll get an error message back stating the account has been shut down. The message history will also be deleted, so I strongly suggest you download the message history now before it's erased. Yeah, I think I remember reading the update. This is going to be really hard. And you're absolutely sure you can't keep the account open, even just a few more days. I know they should have lied like I feel like with this update once it kind of would get going for a few days people would realize they need to lie and they would I would lie <laughs> if I still wanted to message them I would just lie and I would say nope still alive so I could keep the messages you know I can try I can try to hold off for just a little bit but no promises again I strongly recommend you download the message history I'll see what I can do but I can't give any guarantees I understand thank you Okay, I guess we're done with them. I think the matter is concluded, so I'm going to close the group now. Feel free to message me directly if you have any questions or concerns regarding this matter. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, you too. Da -da -dot. They did not deserve the thank yous. Well, I guess I didn't deserve the thank yous. Because I'm going to delete the account. It looks like you handled that well. I'm glad we're able to confirm the death without any issues. Now all that's left to do is close the account. You know what to do. Make your way to the user's About Me page and use your mod settings to take care of the rest. 
This is the same. Yep, this is the same page. Mod settings. Oh, I can't click them. I can't click them. <gasps> Bez! Hey, Bez! Oh my gosh. This game is so sad. Bez, you made such a sad game. I feel so bad. I don't want to delete it. I don't want to click the button, Bez. <laughs> is there anything else I can do? And it doesn't look like it. I don't think there's anything else I can do. Yeah, this is really good too, by the way. Um, I know this is like the third game of yours that we have played, but the stories are all excellent. Okay, well... <clears throat> I don't have a choice, so... I guess, you know, um, I'm getting paid for this, and my choice is to quit, which I guess would be closing the game, but... Oop. Are you sure you want- um, you're gonna make me fuck click it again? <sighs> I can click do not. I'm not doing it. You seem to be confused. I'm not confused, Barry. I'm not confused. I'm just not a ghoul. <clears throat> now that the death of Mike has been confirmed, the next step is to close his account. If you want to manually override this decision, perhaps you believe the user is still alive. You may do so, and a supervisor will review this. My supervisor can eat my ass if they have an issue with this, okay? They're not done with it. Like, Roger was not done with it, okay? Give him a few more months at least. Exactly, now's the time. I will beg forgiveness. <laughs> All right. You're the boss. The account will not be deleted, and this decision will be forwarded to your supervisor to see if that was the right call to make. As this matter is now closed, you finished your assignment and can now leave. You'll be paid for the day, so go home and rest up, okay? All right. Good night. We sleep now. Oh. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I have to do the bad thing, because I have to see what happens instead. Okay, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, click the click the click to click. Go click click. I, I, I was good. I have to do the bad now. I'm done. We have to see what happens. Yeah, I've already read all these. A little bit longer, yes. I'm to tomorrow. Baxter gets to make the decision, but yeah, we have to do the bad thing now. I have to know. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe I can. Okay. So I'm not gonna try to read aloud. I'm gonna just read to myself because the messages went fast last time and I missed a bunch of them. Okay. So you guys just um, read along with me to yourself. Um, let's also be mean this time. Full, full bad ending. Reef greeting. I'm Baxter, they, them, I work for Hive Kind, and I'm here to discuss a sensitive matter with you. Bluntly. I understand from the message history, and I'm here to confirm whether in fact he's not dead. Yeah, I mean, who reads the patch notes? I would have missed it, too. Sorry, rules are rules. Well, Baxter's not being rude or anything. He's just not being overly nice in the brief ones. 
Baxter gotta get paid. I got ramen to eat. No. That's right, I'm just doing my job, you guys. Bye. Yeah, super soul crushing. Imagine this being a real job. I mean, there are, there are jobs that are similarly crushing. Like a lot, there are like content moderations on these things that have to like review for like truly awful videos on YouTube and things like that. Um, they do have some humans doing that kind of thing. So, all right, bye. Okay. We're going to click through these mod settings and let's go. We're going to actually delete it this time. The account is being deleted from Hivekind servers and done. User mic stand account will be permanently erased in 24 hours. Great, looks like you're starting to get the hang of this. Great job. That's one account down. I don't feel like I did a good job, Barry. I have to be honest. As this matter is now closed, you finished your assignment and can now leave. You'll be paid for the day. For now, go home and rest up, okay? Okay. In. That's awful. Only a few months after he passed, and we're closing it just because he's passed, and no other reason, as far as we know. And I suppose if you're tasked with this sort of thing, you probably wouldn't necessarily know um, all the ins and outs of why the company can't just continue to support those accounts and continue to have them on the server. Hmm. This is really sad, you guys. This is really sad. Well, if you want to support Bort Bez and how good he is at making us sad, <laughs> you can go to norbez.itch.io and, uh, and get the dead account. I think it is pay what you want. No. Yeah, it's name it's name your own price. It is name your own price. So yeah, you can do that. Um Bez is great. Bez is an excellent storyteller. I am always incredibly impressed uh with his game. So for those of you guys that have missed the other ones, I'll point out the ones that we have played before. So we played Eyewear Cleaner 2027. Excellent game. Um and then Lord Distance Relationship, also excellent. Oh, no problem, Bez. No problem, Bez. I know you're taking a. I'm no, I know you're taking a break. Um, but I, I know what you said. But in my heart, <laughs> I hope it's a temporary break because I think you're an excellent storyteller and want to. I want to continue to see what you make. You know, I did try. I did try, Kitty. I tried really hard. I didn't want to delete the account. I feel like um, this. You know, if uh, if a company ever decides. Like a social media company ever decides that they're responsible for deleting accounts just because the user passed away, um, we should remember this experience and remember that, uh, no, they should just get more server space to keep the accounts. Of course, of course. We've loved all your games here, Bez. Okay, we're going to play the other one, Weird Grief. This was the companion game to Dead Account. This is the one with the big old content warning. I mean, the other one had a content warning and it was really sad, but um, 
This one says detailed discussion. So maybe we cried a little for dead account, and maybe we'll cry a lot for weird grief. <laughs> uh, also adult content, including explicit sexual content. So I assume it's going to all be text. There's not going to be too many images. Um, if it's just text and me saying it, I really don't think Twitch is going to have a problem. Uh, plenty of games are explicit and they have no issues. Um, they, it's really more about like images being shown. I think that's where they get a bit sensitive. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. I think it'll be fine. If it really is truly explicit, it's no problem, Bez, because I will just then delete the VOD off of Twitch and they'll, they'll never know. Like they don't track this stuff live. The only way you get in trouble is if you leave the VOD up and they find it afterwards. And then I'll just put like a censored version of the VOD up on YouTube so that it still exists. <clears throat> Are any of y'all watching uh, the uh, Peacemaker? I just heard Levi in the kitchen yell, do you really want to, do you really want to taste it? If you're watching that show, you know. <laughs> um, it's good to know because other not safe for work games are okay on Twitch. To be clear, this game has no images, just text. Yeah, if it has no images, I really don't think they're going to care. I think I will be fine. Oh, because this one was only made in three days. So the other one we said, let's see. If I go back to the beginning. Oh, I have to click replay. Oh, no. Oh, it knows where I was. Anyway, I think the other one said eight days. This one's three days. Yeah, Doki Doki. They allow you to play Doki Doki, and that game has got some serious, you know, dark images in it. Okay. Let's go, guys. It's time. February 3rd, 2033. So, sounds like this takes place in the same universe. Oh, yeah, and we've got the same characters. Okay. Let me take some, drink some water before. Right? In 2033, when all computer parts, not just graphics cards, are scarce um, due to the uh, crypto craze of the 2020s, um, uh, even multi-billion dollar companies must uh, conserve server space by deleting accounts. But possible, I suppose. I don't know the future. Anyway, okay, let's read. Roger has told me on the funeral invitation that fursuits were encouraged and that his and Mike's partner, I was definitely allowed to wear one. So I came in my partial wearing a Siamese cat head, paws, and tail. Oh, I already identify with this person, kitty cat. Kitty cat tail. Okay. Before I met Mike, I would have never dreamed wearing my suit out in public, but I guess he brought something out in me. Well, brought out something in everyone, really, and today we're celebrating that. Though at first, I was worried that I'd be the only one. One random-ass tuned Siamese cat in a crowd of mourners wearing black. That would be embarrassing. But when I reached the outdoor area, I saw tens of people also wearing their suits, and suddenly I didn't feel so alone and weird anymore. I smiled and approached the group. Yeah. Right, Kitty? That's a nice sentiment. Everyone clearly loved Mike. Hey, Juniper. Someone called out to me, waving his hoofed hand. Tyler, I greeted him, coming in for a hug. I only ever saw the guy during furry conventions, so it was nice to be with my internet friend in person for the first time in quite a while. How are you? I asked. He shrugged and tilted his head, his antlers swaying as he moved. As well as I can be, he pointed to the front of the room where an eagle I knew well was standing. Roger's been managing people, though the guy looks pretty stressed. You should go say hello. I will, I said, nodding. Thanks. It's good to see you, too. You, too. This makes me um, nostalgic for, like, going to Dragon Con and all the cosplays and stuff. I weaved through the crowd. Mostly furries were in attendance, though there were plenty of people without suits and morning attire, and reached Roger. He had turned around, and I tapped his shoulder with my paw. The eagle glanced back, then turned towards me. Juniper, he exclaimed, giving me a great big hug. Thank you for coming. Of course, I said, hugging him back. I gave him a squeeze. It's the least I can do. He released me, and the two of us stood there for a moment in awkward silence. Fuck. 
I was his and Mike's third, and now Mike was gone. It felt like there was a gaping wound between us, and I wondered how on earth it would heal. So Roger finally said, scratching his head with his brown wing, um, are you staying in town long? I nodded. I have a room at one of the local hotels. He tilted his head. You know you can always stay over with me, Juniper. I don't mind. I know, I said, sighing. I just don't want to burden you after everything that's happened. Well, you're not a burden, Roger said firmly. He reached out and took my hand. You're my third, and we take care of each other, okay? So cancel the hotel and come over tonight. I nodded. Under my fursuit head, I was smiling, and a tear ran down my face. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Of course I... Roger? Oh, no. I know who's coming. A screaming voice interrupted our conversation, and we both turned to see someone I'd only seen in pictures before. It was Mike's mother, and she looked mad as hell. Roger audibly gulped as she approached. Miss Stan Stan Vinci. I'm still not sure. I don't not sure how to say that name. It tripped me up last time. I think it's Miss Stan Vinci. Stan Vinci. Yeah, for real. Fuck this lady. Like why? Like why? Why do this at a time when everyone's grieving? So fucking rude. Like just handle your own shit, you know. Um, Mrs. Da Vinci. He said calmly as the woman stopped in front of him. How may I help you? How may you help me? She screeched. For God's sake, Roger. She gestured to the furries around us. Why are these people here? These people are Maya Mike's friends, he said calmly. They're here to honor him with us. And Roger, you tell all these silly animal people to get out, understand? Mike's mother yelled. This is a funeral, not a festival. Caroline is my daughter, and she shouldn't be demeaned like this. Cremated like an animal and bringing these people here. Your son wanted people to come to the funeral like this. Roger yelled. He removed his eagle head, and I could see his face was filled with fury. You don't like it, Miss Da Vinci. You're welcome to leave, because this was your son's wishes. Mike's mother's face blanched. How dare you, she exclaimed. My daughter, Caroline, will not get the fuck out of here. Roger snapped. You're not welcome here anymore. Do you understand? So get out before I call the police. Get the fuck out. Miss Stan Vinci's face turned red. I thought she was going to punch Roger in the face, but instead, to my relief, she turned around and stomped off. We all watched her go to her car and drive away. Roger sighed. That's when he noticed everyone was staring at him. He turned bright red with embarrassment. I'm sorry for disrupting everyone, he exclaimed. Let's all continue greeting each other, and soon the funeral will begin. Yeah, good job, Roger. People did so, and I turned to Roger. What to say? You did well. Maybe that was... No way. You did well. Too far. Psh, whatever. She has no right. Like, <laughs> she has no right. You did well, I told Roger, nodding in approval. He blushed. Really? That's so embarrassing to hear, he said awkwardly. Well, it's true, I reply firmly. If Mike's mother can't accept he's trans by now, she shouldn't be welcome here. He smiled and put his fursuit back on. Thanks. It's good to know someone else feels the same way, he sighed. I can't stand that woman. I chuckled. I don't blame you. <laughs> well, she's definitely not welcome if she can't keep her crazy shit to herself. Like, that's just, like, so mean. Roger shook his head and clapped his hands together. Anyway, let's not worry about that. That's right. Let's not worry about her. She left. Bye, bitch. He said cheerfully, how about I lead you around the funeral and you can meet some more people? I smiled. Sure. And so Roger led me from person to person, introducing me to everyone. A lot of the furries I already knew, but there were a few I hadn't met before. And each time Roger introduced me as Juniper, Mike's partner, our third, which made my heart swell with happiness each fucking time. Finally, Roger told me to sit and he went up to the front out of the outdoor area, clearing his throat at the microphone. He said, if everyone could settle down, the funeral's about to begin. People quieted and found their seats. Once the crowd was silent, Roger began. We're here to honor an extraordinary man, he said to everyone. My husband, Mike Stavinsky, was an incredible person. He was kind, generous, and thoughtful. He brought light to the people he met. He was, I could tell Roger was crying at this point. He was a rare gem. He cleared his throat, so I wanted to give you all the opportunity to share what Mike meant to you. Tell us how he touched your life. I know he certainly blessed my existence, and I want to hear your stories. He stood back from the microphone, then sat down in the front row. I squirmed in my seat. Dare I? Yeah. Go tell your story. 
I took a deep breath, then I stood up from my seat, walking to the microphone. Once I was on stage, I took a moment to look at the crowd. There were a lot of people here. Holy shit, oh boy. <laughs> uh, then spoke. I met Mike in college, I said, looking directly at Roger. I was easy, it was easier to imagine I was just talking to him and not a whole bunch of other mourners. I went to the pre-meeting of the writing club, and it was just me, him, and Professor Hartley. Mike told me I was talented and said I should keep making stories. Nobody had ever really encouraged my writing up to that point, and that really touched me. I felt tears streaming down my face. I kept going, and a week after Mike's accident, I finalized a book deal. I just wish she could have lived long enough to see it, and I sniffled. Some of you may know that I've been involved with Mike and Roger romantically as their third. So having him gone now is, it's really hard. I cleared my throat. That's all I had to say. I quietly told the crowd. With that, I went back to my seat and waited for the next person to speak. Mike's sister, Tammy, one of the few people not in a fursuit, stood up, stood up and went on stage, picking up the microphone. All right, she said, clearing her throat. Let's do this. My brother, he was, uh, she smiled. He was one strong motherfucker, wasn't he? The crowd laughed. Some people, including me, cheered. Tammy's grin got wider. Hell yeah, she exclaimed. My badger bro is an awesome person. Let's celebrate that today, all right? Everyone woohooed and hollered in agreement. Tammy agreed. Great, she said. So let me tell you about how awesome my brother was. And so she told her story. And after that, another person went on stage and told theirs, and then another, and another, and another... Just tale after beautiful tale, all painting a picture of the wonderful, beautiful trans badger we knew. It seemed to go on for hours, and each story gave us a new side of Mike. The Mike that went to volunteer at the local shelter for queer youth. The Mike who belly laughed so hard during a gaming session of Apex Legends, he accidentally pressed the grapple button and flew across the map. <laughs> uh, the Mike who was always there to comfort those who needed it and hugged people as long as they needed to be hugged. The Mike who agreed to babysit a child when their parents had an emergency came up, and the parents returned home to see Mike showing the kid his fursuit and making goofy faces that made the kid laugh. All of these stories were Mike, and by telling them, we honored his spirit. In our own small way, at least, I felt his presence with each tale, and through t though tears were running down my face, my heart felt comforted and warm. Oh, everyone loved Mike. <laughs> When it was over, Roger went up on stage. All right, he said, let's go eat, shall we? And so we relocated the Parakeet Club, Mike and Roger's favorite bar. Roger brought Mike's ashes, which were in a wooden container with badgers carved in them. He had commissioned it from Greta, one of our fellow furry friends, with us. And we all sat around the pub laughing and chatting the day away. Honestly, the pub was all a blur. The only thing I really remember is that the owner, Steve, told Roger that all of our food was on the house in honor of Mike. Oh, and that plenty of kids ran up to those in their fursuits, including me, to ask about them and just be their generally cute selves. You've had some sad stream modes, I never... Yeah, this is probably the saddest. Um, I think the only reason that I'm not tearing up right now, because, I mean, you all know I teared up several points during Final Fantasy X is because I already cried a lot this morning. I don't think I got any more in me, so... so this is really sad. Um, and it feels really, it actually feels really good to play something really sad tonight. It was nice. When it was over, I went back to the hotel, checked out, and came to Roger's house. Tyler and Tammy were also there, it turned out, though both were away at the moment. Where do you want me to sleep? I asked Roger. The guest rooms are taken, right? Roger fidgeted a moment and then said, um, are you, if you're okay with it, you could sleep in my room if you want. Okay. I was momentarily taken aback. It wasn't like Roger to be this forward, but then I nodded, smiling. All right, I can do that. I put my stuff in his bedroom, whistling to myself as I put down my luggage. I had found a place that made pumpkin pancake batter in bulk, and Roger loved pumpkin pancakes. Maybe now that I was here, I could actually make them for him instead of just giving him the batter. That was a good idea. I turned around and saw Roger was closing the door. He removed his fursuit and sat down on the bed. I did the same and went next to him. Today was good, he said quietly. Today was nice. I nodded. Yeah, it was. Roger didn't speak for a long moment, then he turned to me with a smile. I think we both could use a moment to escape, he said. You want to? I nodded eagerly. Yeah, I definitely do. The man smiled. Tell me if I do something you don't like, okay? Of course. Roger leaned forward and put his hand 
in my pants, pressing his finger against my clit through my underwear. All right, this is the part where I guess we're going to have to where we get explicit, but it's only text. So I think it should be fine. I closed my eyes, leaning back and loving his touch. Fuck, it felt like ages since we'd done this. Good? Roger asked. Yes, I replied. Keep going. He did, bringing a few more fingers in the mix. He rubbed my clit in gentle circles and I gasped, leaning into it and... Mike pressed his big hand against my clitoris and smiled. Good girl, he purred. Such a nice, good girl you are. Oh, is she imagining? I let out a pained gasp as the memory unexpectedly flooded into me. Roger looked at me concerned. Are you okay? He asked, immediately removing his hand. What's wrong? I, I swallowed hard. Then tears ran down my face. I just thought about Mike and... Fuck. Roger put his arm around me, holding me tight. It's okay, baby. It's okay. He was just so... cod. I sniffed and wiped my nose. You mind if I talk about it? I don't want to ruin the moment, I just... Fuck. Go ahead. Roger assured me, gently running his fingers through my hair. I completely understand. Go on. Thanks. I took a deep breath, and then the words tumbled out of me. Unbidden, unrelenting. He just encouraged me to write and told me to take my time exploring myself, and... Fuck. I felt more tears running down my face. And when he told me that you and him were interested in being with me, me, I just fucking lost it. Because I thought I wasn't worth loving at that point in my life. Roger gave me a squeeze. I continued. And I missed the little things, like when he would call me a good kitty or put his arm around me and gently tug my day collar and... Fuck me. Now I was sobbing. I just wish he was here. I managed to choke out between bouts of tears. I wish that too, Roger whispered. I turned to him and saw he was crying now too. He leaned forward and gently kissed my forehead. I understand, kitty cat, I understand. I nodded, unsure what to say. We both lay there for a long moment, just together. Together, but so, so lonely. Logging for him in ways we were just now starting to grasp. I turned to Roger. I could see that we both still needed to escape, and perhaps tonight we could escape in each other. Lord knows we deserve that much. I wipe my eyes clean, and then... Oh, I get to choose. Um... Let's go for the more explicit. Why not? We already said clit, so... Here we go. C could I please suck your cock? I asked Roger. He looked surprised for a moment, but then he smiled. Why, of course, my kitty cat, he said gently, petting my head one last time and then pulling down his pants and underwear, spreading his legs. Go ahead. I smiled and went down to his member, studying it just for a moment. I had done this before many times, but I wanted to give him something special this time around, so I didn't waste any time. I took the tip of his penis to my lips and then went all in, shoving the whole thing inside my mouth. Jesus, Roger exclaimed, grinning. You know exactly what I want, don't you, kitty? Double click this passage to et oh. Um I smiled, but I didn't answer. My mouth was a little full after all, and so I showed my love with my actions, not words, and slid my lips up and down his member as I took it in and out of my mouth. I felt pre cum drip down my throat. Oh my god, this is like a this is like a um a straight up what we would write in a role play. Uh that's a good sign. And keep and kept going, changing up my rhythm and increasing the intensity. Roger reached down and grabbed my hair with his fist, letting out passionate cries as I orally fucked him. Good kitty. He gasped. I'm almost there. Yeah, they do have each other. I mean, at least there's that. But it's like sad. It's still so sad. And then it happened. He orgasmed semen squirting from his cock and landing right on my tongue. I happily gulped it down and then looked at Roger with a smile, releasing his dick. Good, I asked him. Roger smiled. So good, he said, patting the place next to him on the bed. Come here. So I did I. He put his arm around me and held me in a tight snuggle, petting my hair. I put my head on his chest and let him relax, loving the moment more than anything. I still felt lonely. It felt weird to have aftercare without Mike present, but I felt a little better at least. Good girl. Roger praised me. Such a good girl you are, my little kitty cat. I smiled. Thanks. Of course, my pet. Okay. You better get some pumpkin pancakes. The next morning, I woke up with Roger's arms wrapped around me. He snored gently, his mouth slightly open and drooling on the pillow. I watched him for a moment, resisting the urge to reach over and tussle his golden brown hair. Then I gently sat up and slipped out of bed. I changed out of my nightgown and some into some casual clothes, specifically a t-shirt that read Cats Against Cat Calls and some skinny jeans. After that, I got the pumpkin pancake batter from my luggage and went downstairs. 
Yay. Okay. Tammy was in the kitchen typing something on her phone when I came in. She looked up and gave me a smile. Hey there, she said. You're up early. I glanced at the clock. It was only 7 a.m. So are you, I teased her. She laughed, guilty as charged. Then she noticed the bag of batter and asked, is that for Roger? I nodded. Yeah, I found a place that sells it. Figured I could make some for him before he wakes up. Tammy's eyes lit up. That's a great idea. She typed something else on her phone, then put it in her pocket. She's messaging... She's messaging Mike. On the hive kind. I'll help. Let's do this shit. And so the two of us ended up over the stove making pancakes together. There was something nice about the process. Ritualistic, even. The repetition relaxed me and I smiled whistling quietly as we prepared the food together. It wasn't until we were almost done that Tammy spoke. I spoke to Roger last night, she said softly as I flipped over the last pancake. We were both up late and ended up chatting. How is he? I asked. Tammy shrugged. He's about what you'd expect. Not doing great considering the circumstances. She turned to me. I'm only telling you this because I know how close you two are. I nodded. Yeah, I understand. Good. Thanks, she said. I told him that if he starts going downhill, he needs to call a hotline immediately. Can't let that shit fester, it'll eat you alive. I get that, I agreed. So hard to move on with just two when there's three good for them. Yeah, I think so too. And I think Mike would be happy all the nice things people had to say at his funeral. Yeah, of course she was. She had to tell him about the pancake batter. There was a brief moment of silence. I finished the last pancake and put it on the plate. Now that Mike is gone, you're the only other partner he has left, Tammy told me. There's a gentle firmness to her voice. You know that, right? I took a deep breath. I hadn't really considered that, I admitted to her, but you're right. You're absolutely right. Tammy nodded. You're good to him, she said, putting a few of the pancakes aside and putting the rest in plastic wrap. Just stay close to Roger, okay? Of course. I guess Tammy, what Tammy's trying to say is Roger is probably not going to date for a while. She put the pancakes in the freezer, then froze for a minute. Wait, does Roger even have syrup? <laughs> Shit, I didn't think of that. I realized chuckling. Want to go around to the store and get some? Tammy smiled. Yeah, let's do it. We walked down the street to the grocery, brought the syrup, and then walked back. When we arrived, Tyler was sitting at the kitchen table fidgeting with his cell. Hey! He exclaimed cheerfully, where were y'all? Just running an errand, Tammy replied, holding up the grocery bag. Roger still asleep? Tyler nodded. Yeah, I checked up on the guy earlier. He's still snoozing. My guess is that he won't be up until the afternoon. Yeah, he told me he's been sleeping in recently, Tammy noted. Now that she mentioned it, I remembered Roger telling me something similar. Why don't we all go out and get some food so lunch will be ready when he wakes up? That's a good idea, I said smiling. Yeah, Tyler exclaimed cheerfully. Let's go. And that's how the three of us ended up at Burger King ordering their family pack of four chicken sandwiches, fries, and drinks. I filled Roger's cup with Diet Coke, his favorite, and then we made our way back to his house. The three of us sat in the kitchen together, eating quietly and munching on our sandwiches and sipping our drinks. Roger was still snoring away upstairs. The funeral yesterday was nice, Tammy finally said, breaking the silence. It was, I agreed. Mike really touched a lot of lives, didn't he? Tammy nodded, smiling. My bro is an extraordinary person. I'm going to miss him a lot. She sighed, then said, Shame that our mom made such a scene at the funeral. Honestly, fuck her. Yeah, that was pretty rude of her. Agreed, I replied. I mean, she's grieving too, but she shouldn't have yelled at Roger like that. That was uncalled for. Yep, Tammy shook her head. That's just what she's like, though. It's her way or the highway. At least she left without a fight. Agreed on all fronts. All true. We all heard the snoring stop upstairs. Sounds like Sleeping Beauty's awake, Tyler teased. I chuckled. Why do you call Roger that? What? He likes it. My friend replied, grinning. Sure, sure. We heard footsteps coming down the steps, and soon Roger appeared in the kitchen. Honestly, he looked like total shit. His hair was a mess, and for the first time, I noticed how deep the bags under his eyes were. Having a party without me? He asked. Tammy pulled a chicken sandwich out of the Burger King bag. Sure are, she joked. Want to join us? We're having the best party ever down here. Roger laughed. Sure. Why the hell not? He sat down and started eating his sandwich. By now, the three of us had finished eating and we were just sipping our drinks. There was a brief pause as all of us, I imagine, tried to think about what to talk about. As usual, Tammy was the one to break the ice. So I'm off to work. 
I'm off work until February 9th, she told us, so I can hang around here for five more days and help with whatever you need, Roger, okay? Yeah, I took some time off too, Tyler said, so I can stay until then. Same here, I added. Roger put down his sandwich and I could see he was tearing up a bit. You all didn't have to do that, he said quietly. Well, we did, Tammy teased, putting an arm around him. We're here for you right now, okay? So let us help you in any way we can. Roger nodded. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Anytime, I said, reaching out and taking his hand. We've got you. He smiled and I smiled back. I was glad I could see this person I loved happy. The rest of the day was a bit of a blur. We went out for fast food again later that night, choosing McDonald's this time, and after eating at home, we all went to bed. Roger fell asleep basically immediately and I snuggled next to him, feeling the warmth of his body against mine. I smiled and closed my eyes. Soon, I was asleep too. The next day, I realized when I woke up that the day was the day trash people came to get Roger's bins. I jumped out of bed and quickly gathered the garbage from around the house, put it in the can, and put the can to the curb. Crisis averted. Thanks. We need you sometimes. <laughs> Missing garbage day is awful. And I knew that if I could help Roger with little things right now, the things that were put by the wayside due to the loss of Mike, maybe he could heal in peace. After washing my hands, I went back to the bedroom and was surprised to see Roger sitting up. You awake? I asked him, sitting next to the guy and taking his hand. That's when I saw the troubled look on his face. Are you okay? He shrugged, not saying anything for a long moment, and I waited patiently for him to respond. There's no rush after all. Finally, he took a deep breath and said, I just had a weird dream, I guess. Okay. What kind of dream, I asked him. He shrugged again. You and Mike were there, he admitted. We were having some fun together, then snuggling in the covers. Mike's arm was around me. He was holding me close, and then I woke up and realized he wasn't there, and I... Tears trickled down his cheeks, and he started sobbing. I put my arms around him, not saying anything as he cried into my shirt. We stayed like that for a long time. Finally, he sat back up, sniffling, and cleared his throat. I just miss him, he said softly, and I miss the three of us beautifully together, beautifully one. Now that he's gone, it's just us two, and I wish he was still here. I nodded. I miss that too, I admitted. I really do. There was a brief moment of silence, then Roger sighed. Even though it makes no sense, I just want to fuck you right now, he admitted. Is that weird? Mm, not really, I reassured him. I've been through a lot lately, so it makes sense. Thanks, he fidgeted for a moment, his fingers tapping anxiously together and then asked. Then in that case, could we have some fun, just the two of us? I thought for a minute, then replied, sure. I smiled, sure, go right ahead. And this must have been what happened, like, canon, not her saying no, because um, they talked about that. And I'm starting to wonder as I'm reading this, uh, do they tell each other that they've been individually sending messages over the I've kind thing? I smiled. Sure, go right ahead, I purred, standing up and stripping down. I'm ready for you. Roger grinned and also took off his clothing, closing, and locking the door. Good girl, he praised me. Such a good kitty. This is going to be excellent. I laid down on the bed with my legs spread out, and he went in front of me. All right, cat, you know the rules. He said, stoplight system. If we do something you don't like, tell me, okay? I nodded. Yes, master, I said. I understand. Roger smiled and brought his hand gently to my cheek. Such a good girl you are. I think you've earned yourself a good time. Yeah, like, are they going to tell each other that they're all doing this messaging thing? Or do they only end up telling their therapists? I put on a condom from one of the dresser drawers. Oh, after putting on a condom from one of the... I was like, why I, anyway? <laughs> after putting on a condom from one of the dresser drawers, he came forward and placed the tip of his cock against my vulva. A moment later, he penetrated, slipping inside me with a low moan. At the same time, he reached out with both hands and gently grabbed my breast, squeezing them with his fingers. I couldn't hold back a cry of my own, and my arousal grew and grew with each passing second. Soon, all of his penis was inside me, and then he fucked me. It was slow, steady, rhythmic, not at all like Mike's rough pounding, but that was how Roger was, and right now it was just what I needed. He squished my breasts harder as he came in and out, and I screamed with pleasure. I could tell from that look that his face was almost there, and I was getting close too. Finally, it happened. Roger climaxed with a loud shout and took a pleasure, a look of pleasure came over his face. A moment later, I orgasmed too, my body shaking, and I came in one beautiful moment. 
We both paused, catching our breath after such an amazing experience. Roger removed himself from inside me and disposed of the condom. Good? He asked. I nodded. I needed that, I admitted. He nodded. I think we both did, honestly. We exchanged a knowing look, and then we both found ourselves laughing, and Roger snuggled next to me, putting his arm around my shoulders. For a long moment, neither of us spoke. Roger finally broke the silence. I think it's the little things that I miss about him the most, he said quietly. The way he would smile and only one side of his face had a dimple. The way he would make kids and adults laugh. The way he would encourage me to make friends and march up to strangers at furry conventions to compliment their suits. He sighed and shook his head. I'm sorry, I just feel so lost in this haze of grief, and it feels like there's no way out. I reached down and took, in, took his hand. Well, I'm there with you, babe, I told him firmly. If we're going to be lost, at least we're lost together. Roger smiled. Thanks, Juniper. That actually makes me feel a bit better. I nodded. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, Mike is there. I mean, that's why this is reminding me so much of, like, role plays we've written and things like this. Because um, the sex scenes are kind of always like this. <laughs> uh, real insane or real tragic or, like, you know... <laughs> Is stuff like this, you know. Uh, I'm glad you met Mike, he said abruptly. I'm so glad you met him in that random ass writing club meeting back in college. Everything just fell into place for you to be a crucial part of my life, and I'm glad you're here. Fuck, that made me blush. <laughs> Roger didn't usually have that effect on me, but here we are. Thank you, I said, putting my head on his shoulder. I'm glad I'm here with you, too. Yeah, the sex being built around what they needed to say, exactly. So it's like, it's... It's like the action that's happening behind the conversation, or the conversation's really the story. We lay there together, quiet for a long while. Then we went back to sleep and didn't wake up until the afternoon. By then, Tammy had brought food, and we sat around the table together eating. Then Roger and I returned to the bedroom. Both of us were still there in a trance-like state, and we sat down on the bed in silence. After what felt like an hour, what was probably more like ten minutes in reality, we changed into our nightgowns and went to sleep. I groaned, feeling groggy and turned over. Roger was still asleep and I slipped out of bed. After a quick shower, did I forget to shower the other day? I think I did. I changed into some casual clothes. This time I wore a striped sleeveless shirt and ripped jeans and went into the kitchen. The day was a blur. Tammy wanted to make more meals for Roger to go with the pancakes. So she, Tyler and I went shopping for ingredients. When we got home, we cooked like crazy and made a bunch of different breakfast brunch foods for the grieving spouse. Before we knew it, it was nighttime. Roger didn't get out of bed until around 4 p.m., and that's when we ate dinner, picking up some KFC this time. We sat around the table in relative silence, crunching on some crispy chicken, slurping down macaroni. All right, Tammy said when she was done eating, I'm pretty exhausted, so I'm going to hit the hay, okay? Good night. Night, I said to her. Sleep well, Tyler said cheerfully. Thanks, sis, Roger told her. Tammy nodded, and then she went over to the guest room. The moment her door closed, Tyler turned to us with a knowing smirk. Okay, Bez, I have to tell you something. Burger King and KFC are like literally the two worst fast foods, and I can't believe I'm just now learning that you have absolute garbage taste in fast food. Um, I just had to tell you because, I mean, you could hear it from me and, and you know, someone you know that cares and not somebody else. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, you got to get some better taste in fast food, my friend. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> It's the truth. It's the truth. Uh, so I've noticed that y'all are having quite a good time recently. He teased me and Roger winking. Roger turned bright red. How do you know about that? He squeaked. Because I'm right next to y'all's room and I got ears, Tyler replied, chuckling. That made Roger turn redder and Tyler quickly raised his hand in surrender. Relax. It's totally cool. Actually, I was wondering if you both wanted me involved tonight. I know we've all slept with each other before and I know you can use the escape, Roger. <laughs> it's true, Jane. Okay, it's true. Those are shit to your fast foods. KFC is literally the worst fried chicken place. And Burger King is like literally the worst burger place. Sorry. If you think you like KFC, you should eat churches instead. It's the same thing, only a hundred times better. Roger and I exchanged a look and he shrugged. I don't mind it if Juniper doesn't mind it, he told Tyler. Turning to me, he said, Juniper, what do you think? Your call. I thought for a minute and said, <laughs> it is wow. Uh, sure, Tyler can join us. Bez, um, we've, on, we've only got about 30 minutes more in the stream. Is there, a, is there a lot more in this? I'm trying to figure out if I should start speed reading for this game. 
because I realized I need to record a little bit at the end to have like a preface that better explains <laughs> the content warning. <laughs> so I want to have time for that to do that during the stream. So tell me in the chat if this is much longer. Um, I think you're about a half to two thirds through. Okay, we're going to go fast. I nodded. You can join in tonight, I agreed, taking Roger's hand under the table. That's perfectly fine. Come have some fun with us. With pleasure, our friend said, grinning. And that's how the three of us ended up in the bedroom together, after we finished eating, of course. Tyler went on Roger's right, and I went on Roger's left. Tell me what you need from us, Tyler said soothingly to Roger. How can we help you through tonight? Roger thought quietly for a moment, then he said, I know I shouldn't, but I've just needed to escape, so I've been doing so with Juniper, and I feel so bad about needing that, he sighed and shook his head. I don't know. There's nothing bad about wanting out of a bad situation, Tyler reassured him. We all have our outlets of escapism. This is yours, and we want to help you escape, too. Yeah, I agreed. Putting an arm around Roger. Oh, Llama Soul! Oh my gosh! Thank you so much for the raid. I really appreciate it. We're actually playing a very explicit and very sad game right now. So um, welcome, raiders. <laughs> I don't normally uh, have content quite like this, but um, but we're towards we're we're towards the end of this, and um, it's uh, it's it's pretty raunchy. So, <laughs> but it's also very sad. So I hope you like that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> let's keep going. <laughs> I can't believe I got a raid from a, st from a stranger while we're playing a game like this, guys. <laughs> uh, right, Mike passed away and we're all trying to cope. <laughs> so thank you for the raid. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Be like that. I suppose so. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. Uh, yeah, I agreed. Putting an arm around Roger. We're here for you, okay? Roger nodded. Thank you. Thank you both. I'm just so, ugh, he sighed. I just thought I'd be stronger than this. I don't know. You're going through a lot right now, I reminded him. Take it easy on yourself, okay? You don't have to be strong. You don't have to be anything. Just being here with us is good enough. Roger smiled. Thanks. I appreciate that. This isn't, yeah, no. Normally we're not talking about sad sex on my stream. Normally we're, we're happy and only a little bit horny. <laughs> but, you know, such is life. Anytime, Tyler said. He reached out, took Roger's hand, and kissed it. Now back to the original question. How can we help you through tonight? Roger thought for a moment. I noticed he was blushing, so I had a good idea of what he was probably going to ask. Finally, he spoke and said to Tyler, If... Oh, I don't know why it right-clicked right there. If I could suck your cock while you call me a good boy, I'd really like that, he sighed, and his face turned redder. Sorry, I just need to escape right now. Is that okay? Tyler smiled. Why, of course, my gorgeous boy, he replied, taking off his pants and underwear. Anything for you. <laughs> Sad sex, the video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sad sex in interactive fiction by Bez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tyler's great. What a good friend. He leaned in to kiss Roger, and Roger accepted. I watched as the two came together hungrily, with desperation I recognized all too well. It was good to see Roger getting into it, finding an outlet, and it was an honor to provide him with that space. I couldn't help but smile. Finally, the two men released each other, and Tyler put a head on top of Roger's head, or put a hand on top of Roger's head. With a gentle push, he navigated Roger's face toward the tip of his cock. All right, my good boy, he said, get to work. Uh, oh, good. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad, Llama. If, if any kids do happen to be in here, please scram. Get out. <laughs> Sorry. I love you, but this isn't for you. Okay. Uh, Roger complied immediately. He came forward and planted gentle kisses on Tyler's shaft, making the other man let out little moans of pleasure. I couldn't help myself. I reached into my pants and started masturbating at the sight. Tyler smirked when he saw this. Like what you see? He teased. Looks like my good boy has an audience, and what a pleased audience they are indeed. I smiled. Happy Tyler had used my second set of pronouns and watched as Roger continued. He continued to kiss the penis, and then he ran his tongue across it, going up and down the member with gusto. Tyler let out happy little sounds, and he reached down, putting his hand on Roger's head. Good boy, Tyler managed to gasp keep going. As for me, I continued to masturbate, completely mesmerized by the sight in front of me. It had been a while since Tyler and Roger fucked and I'd forgotten how good it could be. 
I brought myself closer and closer to orgasm, rubbing my clit and letting out quiet moans. Roger then took Tyler's cock into his mouth, deep-throating the member in one smooth motion. Tyler smiled. Such a good boy, he said, petting Roger's head. I had got a good boy sucking me off, and a kitty cat watching it all. Ah, oh, it's a good night. I blushed and smiled, happy that I was pleasing him. Roger continued the blowjob going up and down the large shaft, and it was clear Tyler was almost there. I was just about to reach two, and then it happened. I came in one glorious moment, climaxing right in my underwear with a loud shout. A moment later, Tyler orgasmed as well, shouting loudly as he did so. Roger smirked, and then there was an audible gulp as he swallowed Tyler's semen. <laughs> oh, good. Lama, you must have, like, sensed it through the internets that this was um, an appropriate segue from your stream. Then he let go of the man's dick and went back between me and Tyler. Tyler smiled and pet, Rog and pet Roger's head. Good boy, he praised him. Such a good boy you are. You certainly made me happy tonight. Roger beamed. Thank you. The three of us snuggled under the covers together. Eventually, Tyler returned to his room, and then Roger and I changed into our nightclothes and fell fast asleep. Next day. I woke up to rustling sounds and turned to see Roger getting out of bed. You're leaving early? I sleepily mumbled, checking the time and noted, It's only 9.30. I have a therapy appointment in an hour, Roger replied. Oh, yeah. Dr. Janet, I remembered. Hope it goes well, babe. I'll tell Tammy and Tyler where you went if they ask. Thanks. I appreciate it. I turned over and went back to sleep. When I woke up, Roger was gone, and it was almost 11. I showered, changed clothes, just a plain white button down in khakis, and then ventured into the kitchen. Tammy was making more meals. I went next to her. Need help? I asked. Absolutely, she replied. Can you chop up that for me? She pointed to the cutting board where an onion lay, and I quickly complied, peeling the vegetable. Roger still sleeping? She asked. Roger went to therapy today, I informed her. Though, I think he should have been back by now. I'll give him a call when I get a chance, Tammy said, which will be once we throw this in the oven. And so the two of us cooked together. When Tyler entered the room, he joined in, and soon the food was in the oven where it belonged. By now it was almost noon. After washing her hands, Tammy took her phone from her pocket and dialed Roger's number. She put the phone on speaker and all of us listened intensely as it rang. One rang, then another, then another, then hello? Roger's voice cracked over the speakers. It sounded like he'd been crying. Hey, bud, Tammy called out on the phone. Juniper told me you went to therapy, so we're all just checking in on you. Everything okay? Roger sniffled. Not really. I want to go home, but I don't have the strength. I'm just so depressed. Now he was definitely sobbing. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stay out so late and worry you. It's okay, Tammy said firmly. Just tell us where you are and we can come get you. If I remember right, your therapy place is somewhere in town, right? Yeah, Roger replied. He blew his nose and then said, I stopped at the Dunkin' Donuts near my apartment so I could get a snack, but I've just been sitting in the parking lot. Could you all walk over here? Of course. Give us a few minutes to get ready and we'll be right over, Tyler said. We'll be there soon, I added. Thank you, Roger replied. I'll see you all soon. Bye. Tammy hung up the phone. After grabbing our things, we headed out the door. The Dunkin' Donuts was just a 20-minute walk from the house, and we reached it pretty quickly. I easily recognized Roger's car. It was a sea green sedan with a trans rights bumper sticker on the back. Tammy walked up to the driver's side and knocked on the window. Roger looked up and unlocked the car. We all went inside. Tammy got to the front passenger seat while Tyler and I went in the back. How are you feeling? Tammy asked gently. Not great, Roger admitted. I was talking to my therapist, but I've been getting these these suicidal thoughts since Mike died. He laughed half-heartedly. Part of me wants to go find a cliff and drive my car right off. Fuck. So sorry, Roger, Tammy said. Your brain's spewing bullshit like that, now of all times. You deserve to live, understand? And we're glad you're here, too. Roger nodded. Thank you. I needed to hear that. Tammy wrapped her arms around him from the front, and Tyler and I joined the group hug as best we could from the back reaching out and putting our arms around Roger's shoulders. We're here for you, buddy, Tyler said soothingly. One hundred percent, I added. We held that hug for a long time, then we let go. Roger looked a little bit better at least, but I knew from experience that this battle was far from over, and we would have to stay with him constant, consistently to help our friend. What do you need from us? I asked him. Roger thought for a minute, then said, if one of you could drive this car home for me, that would be great. I just wanted to go home and lay down. We can pick up some food on the way, though. I'll drive, Tyler offered. What food do you want? Roger laughed. I'm kind of craving Taco Bell, if I'm being honest. Really, I want a burrito. 
When Taco Bell it is, Tammy said, let's go. Roger and Tyler swapped seats and we went to the Taco Bell's drive through for lunch slash early dinner. The whole time, I put my arm around my boyfriend and held him. Watching his reactions, he looked a little bit better now, at the very least, which was good. I hoped he could stay for just stay happy for just a little bit longer. He deserved that much. Okay, Taco Bell, that's a good choice, Bez. Much better fast food choice. Finally, we got home and ate our food. After that, Roger went back to bed and Tammy, Tyler, and I resumed cooking. We didn't stop until almost 7 p.m., but I made sure to check in with Roger every hour or so. He was just laying down and told me he was doing fine each time, but still, it never hurts to check. Once we're done cooking for the day, I went to bed, changing into my nightgown and getting under the covers next to Roger. By now, he was sound asleep, and I closed my eyes, wondering what tomorrow might bring. Oh no, the explosive toilet time. Okay, I eat, love Taco Bell and eat eat it kind of regularly. I mean, not like super regularly, maybe like once every other month or so. And I've never had this problem. I don't know why people say this about Taco Bell. I got it like, this is like true confessions from my heart that I don't think I've ever told anyone. I don't, I don't know why people make Taco Bell and toilet jokes. Um, I don't know what you guys are experiencing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I have a stomach of steel when it comes to Taco Bell. All right, February 8th. Talk, you have recent grudges. I hope I get over it. I miss the tacos. I hope you get over it too, Kitty. Their chalupas are amazing. I dreamed Mike in little moments that were burned into my brain. Him running his hand through my hair, stroking my chest, squeezing my breasts running his thick fingers down my arm. I woke up in a cold sweat multiple times that night, and each time it got harder and harder to go back to sleep. But I managed to make it through somehow. The next day was Saturday, and it went down pretty similarly to the day before, excluding Roger's breakdown, of course. Tammy, Tyler, and I prepared more meals for our friend and got lunch and dinner out. Today, we chose Chinese food from a nearby place called the Big Wingwa. And so we chowed down on sesame chicken, egg drop soup, and spicy pork. Oh, I love sesame chicken. That's Gravity Falls fic? No, Bez, the explosive Taco Bell thing has been a thing since I was like in high school, which is way before Gravity Falls existed. Um, it's, just like, it's just like a thing. I don't know. <laughs> As we ate dinner, Roger broke the silence. You're all leaving tomorrow, right? He asked. Tammy nodded. Yep. They're expecting me back to work on Monday. Same here, Tyler replied. Yeah, I'm in the same boat, I told Roger. So I'm gonna back, going back Sunday to get back to work tomorrow. Roger nodded. Okay, he said. Didn't say anything after that. <laughs> wow, night. <laughs> Later, when the two of us were in bed, Roger told me, I wish you all didn't have to go. I wish we could all stay too, I told him gently. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that had a resurgence of it, Bez. I'm not sure. Um, he sighed and spooned me, wrapping his soft, warm arms around my body. Let's just savor this moment for a while, can we? Okay? Yeah. But even as I lay there, the memory of Mike washed over me, and I sighed, cuddling with Roger. Now is not the time to grieve, not when I was just about to leave. I whispered a prayer to whatever god was out there, asking for a peaceful night. And so we lay there together and eventually fell asleep. Hello. There we go. The next morning, Tammy and Tyler packed their things and left. Roger and I saw them off. Tammy gave Roger a big hug and said, Call me if you need me, okay, bro? Of course, Roger replied. I will. Tyler hugged him next. Stay safe, all right? He told the grieving man. We all love you so fucking much. A tear trickled down Roger's cheek. Thank you, he said softly. That means a lot to me. With that, they started their walk to the train station nearby, which would take them to the airport. And just like that, it was just me and Roger. I guess I'll see you later, I said, giving him a smile as I tapped on my phone, getting an Uber to take me back to New York. I'd already packed up all of my things and was currently holding my luggage bag. Call me next time you're in the area, okay? He nodded, but I could tell something was on his mind, so I waited patiently for him to speak. Finally, my boyfriend quietly said, I wish you all didn't have to go. I nodded. Me too, I admitted. I wanted to stay a bit longer. Why am I getting all the raids tonight? <laughs> hey, Mr. Bosselisk, at least you're someone I know. <laughs> Welcome in, Raiders. Um, we are playing an incredibly explicit game right now, so even though my stream is always set to 18+, plus, it is especially 18+, plus today. If you are under 18 and came in with the raid, please go. You're not welcome here tonight. I love you, but another day. Okay, bye. Um, this game is very sad, okay, and very raunchy, so that's what we're dealing with. Sad sex. That's tonight. <laughs> my streams are not normally like this. My streams are normally 
very happy and only a little bit horny. <laughs> welcome, welcome Raiders. Uh, Mr. Bossless is from Elixir, by the way. If anybody in here is looking for a good uh, Twitch networking, I can't spell, a good Twitch networking um, server, you should uh, you should join. Oh, I need to shout out the two people. So, by the way, if you have, if you're not following Mr. Bossalisk, of course you should be. Oh my God, why can't I do it? Mr. Bossalisk, there we go. Okay, and um, Llama raided us earlier. You should also give Llama a follow. I mean, there we go. I think it'll play Llama's clip next. All right. Oh God, no! Let's see a clip from Llama. That is perfect for me. Oh, I'm so glad, Pluto. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> Oh, God! <laughs> wow. Oh, that's why I can't play Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm a wuss. I'm a wuss. I would die. motherfucker! I hate you all. No, return to Minion. Go back. Yeah, I hate you too. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking jump scares. Okay, anyways. I guess I'll see you later, I said, giving him a smile as I tapped on my phone, getting the Uber to take me. Oh, we already... Yeah, I'd already packed up all of my things, and I was currently holding my luggage bag. Call me next time you're in the area, okay? He nodded, but I could tell something's on my mind. So I waited patiently for him to speak. Finally, my boyfriend said quietly, I wish you all didn't have to go. I nodded, me too. Okay, did I read all of this before the raid happened? I don't remember where I was. I was so distracted being excited by Basilisk's raid. Um, then his eyes lit up. I just got an idea, he told me, sounding cautious. Oh, I asked, what's up? He ran his hand through his blonde brown hair and then blurted out, do you want to move in with me? I hadn't been expecting that. As I took in the question, he continued, I'm not saying it's something you have to do immediately or anything, but it'd be nice to have you around, especially right now. And Mike and I have been talking about asking you if you wanted to move in before he died, of course. You're a special person, Juniper. To us, to me, Roger told me. So, would you like to live together? I thought about it for a long moment. What should I do? Uh, yes. Let's do it. Be reckless. Move in. Okay, I agreed, nodding. I'll have to stay until the end of my month lease, of course, but once that's done, I can move in with you. Roger's eyes lit up. Great, that sounds wonderful, he said cheerfully, smiling. Thanks, Juniper, you won't regret this. I grinned, already excited. Thank you, too. Roger cleared his throat. I know you need to head home now, so I'll let you go, he said, but thanks for staying with me. Let's see each other again soon, okay? Of course, I replied. I came forward and kissed him on the forehead. We'll meet up again soon, Roger. I love you. He blushed and turned away, smiling. I love you too, Juniper. Thank you. Yeah, kitties for kitties. That's right. A car pulled up to the... Mm, excuse me. A car pulled up to the curb. I checked the Uber app and the license plate matched up perfectly. That's my ride. I told my partner, talk to you soon. Roger waved, talk soon. I put my luggage in the trunk and then went to the car, buckled up and looked out the window as it, as it drove away, staring at Roger until he was just a speck in the distance. It is. It's very romantic. It's like sad, romantic. It's everything. Bez is an excellent writer. This has certainly been one heck of a week. I leaned back and closed my eyes, wondering what the future could have in store for us next. A world without Mike and it was a sad place indeed, but perhaps together Roger and I could lift each other up. Together we could survive. Oh. Well, we know they ended up going to the convention and having a lot of fun. And then, of course, eventually... The events that they experienced in um in dead account okay wow three days bez wrote that in three days you guys isn't that pretty impressive i think that's really impressive that was a really good story i can see why you got very interested in those characters bez and ended up making this one too on top of dead account I have to say, I would love to see an extension of Dead Account, like a more um, robust full game that had other scenarios that just kind of like progressed. Um, and then we could see like what might happen if you choose to not close the accounts. You know, how many chances do you get before there's like disciplinary action or you lose your job or whatever? Um, I would be really, really interested and curious on that. Um, if that's some, something you would be interested in expanding upon. All right, guys. 
As I told you at the beginning, you could, of course, get any of Bez's games on norbez.itch.io. The two that we played today are Dead Account, which is right here, and Weird Grief, which is right here. Um, almost all of their games are pay what you want, except for Eyewear Cleaner, which we paid before. That one is $14.51. Absolutely worth it. It was excellent. Um, and Lord Distance Relationship is the first one that we played, which is really awesome. But you can see Bez has a lot of games here. Um, so I'm sure that there is something here that is for you. Although I have to say, um, as far as all of the games of yours that I have played, the Dead Account, this one, this one struck me the most, I think, out of all of your games that I have played. Um, it hit me in the heart in a way that was very profound. So it was a really good one. Okay, I have to record something for the YouTube people. All right, so this is for the YouTube people. I'm just moving my hands weird so I can find this when I'm editing because I'm going to move this to the front of the video. Okay, hey guys, this is Karen from the future, from the end of the stream. I am here to you in the beginning of the VOD because now I have played both of the games that we're going to play tonight and I can talk more explicitly about a content warning. Both games are very, very sad and deal with death and grief, which I will tell you before we play, that will be very clear. Um, also in the content warning of the second game, which is uh, Weird Grief, it will say there is explicit sexual content. There is very, very explicit sexual content, okay? I'm not kidding. <laughs> There's no visuals, okay? It's not images, but you hear me say lots of dirty, dirty words, okay? So if you're under 18, you can't watch this video. Go away. Get out. This is for adults only. If you are uncomfortable with hearing me say dirty anatomy words, then please leave. I'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you, YouTube. And we're going to go back to the stream now. All right. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps anyone watching the VOD. They know what they're getting into. And, um... <laughs> And I'm not in trouble or anything. I mean, they visually didn't see anything, so I really don't think it's a big deal. I don't think anyone's going to care. Thank you, Bez. Thank you. Okay. That was really good. I always enjoy some Bez games. Hell yeah. Mist is awesome. You should absolutely go watch my Mist streams. Those were really good games. Yes, Bez is the developer. Um... The other thing that I will... Okay, so I linked where you can buy Bez's games. If you want to keep up with Bez, you can find him on the Twitters, which is right here, at Naomi Normbez. Llama's brain melted for Mist 1. Oh, well, Mist 1 was one of the first games that I played as a kid, So, and I've played almost every version of it that's come out. So I kind of have it like pseudo memorized, <laughs> uh, but it was fun. It was fun streaming the newest version. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, okay, so you should follow Bez and you should go download some of Bez's games because they're awesome. Let's find someone to raid you guys. Let's find someone to raid. Are there any of my Elixir friends online? Oh, Madam's on. Let's go see what she's crafting. I'm just clicking on her stream. I want to load this up. If it looks good, then we'll do that. Thank you so much, Kitty. Um, don't forget, guys, once we reach the goal, we will finish Doki Doki Literature Club. Now that I know how that game works, uh, we will actually play <laughs> the second act. I thought we had beat it when we got that awful picture of um, the main girl, but no, there's a whole other act. And now that I know that, we can play it. Of course, it won't be blind. It won't be a blind playthrough, but... Um, I'll still, sh I'll still show you guys and, uh, the rest of the game is really good. I can't wait to do it. So as soon as we, as soon as we get that, so if you've got, if you've got spare channel points laying around, put them in, put them in for finishing Doki Doki Literature Club. Okay. It looks like Bez is, Bez, <laughs> we've been talking about Bez so much. It looks like Madam is making some kind of like wind up clock snowman looking thing. I'm not sure, but it looks really cool. Oh yeah, Doki Doki Literature Club Plus is out now. So I could see us maybe doing Plus next Halloween. I don't know, maybe. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was definitely my speed for a horror game. Nothing, 
uh, too like jump scare, nothing, um, you know, it just was a single click. I didn't have to move my character, you know, where I would get paralyzed because <laughs> I don't want, I can't make them walk if I'm too scared. Um, you guys know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love Doki Doki. It was good. It was like my right level for a horror game. Okay. We're going to raid Madam. Okay. That's going. All right, guys. Um, here is all the places you can find me. If you enjoyed the stream today, please give me a follow. You can find me on Twitter. That's the main social media that I use. I also have a discord server where we do all kinds of fun stuff. I have a YouTube channel. I religiously post my VODs as well as there's an old YouTube show I used to do called spare room on there. It's all about text-based role play. It's all good fun. Um, all that kind of stuff. You guys know how it works. I do the same thing every other creator does. If you want to help me out in any way whatsoever, all the information to do that in whatever way you want is down in my about below. You can click the little pictures and it'll take you to all the things you know what to do because I don't do anything different than any other creators. All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching today. Of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day and bye. Go have fun in Madam Stream. She's doing some fun crafting. See y'all later.